I come across as being pretty hard on Paul in a lot that I say on this channel. Although to be fair, it's not really Paul that I'm hard on. It's the things that people do with Paul's writings. Peter saw how easy it is to twist the things that Paul said. He wrote that in all his epistles, Paul spoke things which are hard to understand, which unlearned and unstable people twist to their own destruction. But in reality, in my opinion, some of the most impressive teachings in the whole Bible were written by Paul. So in this video, I will pay tribute to some of them. Jesus first. Let's start with a shocking statement in the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians, which relates to what I have said in my opening remarks. Paul had just referred to people who would try to pervert the gospel of Christ. Take note that it is the gospel of Christ that he is defending and not some new doctrine that he supposedly taught. He wrote, Though I or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. And then to make it doubly clear that he was quite serious about this, he says it again, As I said before, so I will say it again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have already received, let him be accursed. That is a mark of a great leader, the ability to put the message above the messenger. John the Baptist said that people needed their appreciation for Jesus to increase, while their appreciation for John himself needed to decrease. And Paul says much the same thing. He wanted only for people to accept the gospel of Christ and not some supposed new gospel invented by people who have perverted everything that he said. And yet this new perverted gospel is what most of institutional Protestantism follows and teaches today. Now sadly, the history of the church has been one human leader after another being elevated to the exclusion of Christ. We have Lutherans, Calvinists, Wesleyans, Franciscans, but precious few Christians. People who are prepared to let themselves and their leaders be cursed if it would turn the attention of the world more fully to Christ. Paul is one of very few truly Christian teachers in the world throughout history because he was prepared to be left out of the picture altogether in order for people to hear Jesus and the gospel that Jesus preached. Living by faith. Moving on, one of the most common teachings of apostate denominations all over the world is the tent maker myth. They take an obscure account of something Paul did and they make it an excuse to ignore everything Jesus said about living by faith. People everywhere say that they have been called to be tent makers, working for money, while the rest of the world goes to hell. And they blame it all on Paul. But how many of them have ever heard or taught what Paul actually said about tent making? I'm not talking about when he admitted that he was bragging and disobeying God, or when he was boasting about how great he was and then sarcastically said of his behavior, forgive me this wrong. I'm talking about what he said quite seriously in the ninth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Talking about his ministry, he says, what soldier going to war would ever be expected to pay his own wages? Whatever else you might attribute to Paul, he knew that the correct relationship should be between us and the king, whose army we are a part of. We preach the gospel, seeking to promote his kingdom, and the king of kings feeds and clothes us, just like Jesus promised. Anyone trying to do otherwise is going to miss the mark, and be pretty useless as a servant of Christ. Or as he put it, what soldier going to war would ever be expected to pay his own way? Hating money. But let's look at what is arguably Paul's greatest statement and one of the most concise summaries of what Jesus taught. I can't think of anything that Jesus said which surpasses the clarity with which Paul expressed it in his first letter to Timothy when he said, the love of money is the root of all evil. I read it just like he wrote it, and I believe it just like he wrote it. It clears away all the waffle and all the excuses that people give for loving money and working for it. Now many have tried to twist it and make it say that you can love money and even give most of your life to serving it and still not be evil. And as long as you put a little something in the offering plate, the pastor will justify your love for money. 
but the truth is right there in very simple words penned by the Apostle Paul. Love is love, money is money, evil is evil, and all is all. Take it or leave it, just as Paul said it. Clarity on Baptism And now for another one. As has been noted elsewhere on this channel, Paul was the first one to discover that the early Christians made a false assumption about water baptism. He does this in the first chapter of his first letter to Corinth, where he says, Christ did not send me to baptize, he sent me to preach the gospel. You can see more about that in the video on water baptism and the Holy Spirit in the Teachings of Jesus playlist on this channel, number 18, the most misunderstood teaching of Jesus. Clarity on speaking in tongues. In that video, you will also note that it was Paul who had the courage and the wisdom to set the early church straight on the phenomenon of speaking in tongues. And he does it in what many people believe to be the greatest poem in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13. This is often called the love chapter. Paul opens it by saying, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but I do not have love, I am no better than a lot of meaningless noise coming from crashing musical instruments. The rest of that chapter gets even better, as he tells us that love is the one great overriding call of Christ and the only thing that will last for eternity. Clarity on healing. A third area where Paul got things into better perspective had to do with physical healing. He did a few miracles and he was not against healing, but he was quite clear that there is no such doctrine as the one that says Jesus died on the cross to give us perfect health. In the 8th chapter of Romans, another great chapter with several fantastic verses in it, Paul specifically says that we are still waiting for the new bodies that God is going to give us when Jesus returns. But until then, perfect health is not going to be a present reality. He says, we groan within ourselves, waiting for the redemption of our mortal bodies. We have hope of such a thing, but hope that can be seen is not hope. So in the meantime, we need to patiently wait for it. Clarity about the Holy Spirit. In the same chapter, Romans chapter 8, Paul said that anyone who does not have God's Spirit is simply not a Christian. This puts an end to the argument about first-class Christians and second-class Christians. He then made it clearer in his letter to the Galatians. Paul says that the evidence or fruit of God's Spirit is love and a lot of related traits. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. There is no law that can stop you from having all these things. Women versus men? Much has been said about Paul's comments on the role of women, which seems so far out of step with what we have come to know about the abilities of women all over the world today. But once again, the problem arises most when we elevate Paul to the level of a God and make his personality equal with the personality of God. Like all of us, he was flawed and he was a product of the age in which he was born. But apart from all his off-the-cuff references to women, his real and serious teaching on the question of gender based on his faith in Jesus was this, there is neither male nor female in Christ Jesus. Again, he utters with astounding simplicity something which cuts right through all the selfish and self-seeking debates between the two sexes. He was batting above his own ability by saying that, but it clearly is an inspired revelation and as such is totally consistent with all that Jesus stood for. Most people would just not believe it came from Paul because of all the wrangling that centers around other things that he said. Quitting Jobs Although Paul gives instructions for servants to be subject to their masters, instructions which are still used today in most churches to argue that God wants us all to work hard five or six days a week, most people overlook two very important lines that he gives at the end of those instructions in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 21 and 23. Are you a slave? Do not feel condemned about it. But if you have an opportunity to be free, definitely grab it. Do not be the servants of men. 
Where is that being preached? All over the world, people continue to sell themselves into voluntary slavery when they could be free to work for God. Paul was very clear that this is not how Jesus planned it. Now we've discussed a few of the outstanding teachings of Paul here today, and I hope they've given you a glimpse of the greatness of the man. On the other hand, I don't want any of you to use this as an excuse to walk away from Jesus so that you can start following Paul. Such an action is fraught with spiritual dangers of the worst kind. Toward that end, I will give one more teaching of Paul, which is important in keeping the right perspective. It comes from 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, where he says, Follow me as I follow Christ. What that implies to me is that we must first follow Christ so that we can recognize when Paul is doing or saying something that is consistent with what Christ taught. By implication, he is also saying that if he does or says something that is not consistent with what Jesus taught, then we should not follow him. Can you see that? And that brings us back to the passage which I quoted near the start of this video. If Paul even appears to be teaching something that is contrary to the teachings of Jesus, don't follow him and even go so far as to curse what he has said rather than use him as an excuse to disobey Jesus. I hope you'll subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already and click on the little bell so that you will receive notifications as new videos become available with each of them aiming to lead you closer to Jesus Christ and all that he taught. Please write to me today at the email address on screen.